All right, welcome back to another episode of the Cody Tucker Show. Today, I am joined by a very special guest from the legendary R&B group Color Me Bad. 12 million records sold. Oh my God, Mr. Mark Calderon, how you doing, man? Hey, man, how are you, dude? I am great. Been looking forward to this for a while, so uh, yeah, thanks. dude. No, I people probably are wouldn't assume it, but I am such a huge fan of like pretty much any R and B from like the seventies through the nineties, maybe like early two yeah. thousands. Uh, obviously, you know, with like the Danzig and Misfits and shit, people probably <laughs> <laughs> don't think I'm like a color me bad fan, but boy, am I so. Oh, thank yeah. you, brother. Appreciate Dude, it. No Appreciate problem. It. No problem. So before we kick into things, is there anything you'd like to plug, promote, where can people find you? All that good stuff. Oh man. I mean, you know, uh, Instagram, you know, color me bad music, um, Facebook, color me bad. Uh, what else is there? What other social media? <laughs> Just uh, uh, MySpace. Uh, I don't know if that's is that coming no, my... back yet. Or... <laughs> you come to our website, colormebad.com. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and a tour. Like, are y'all are touring right now too? On like two separate oh, tours. Yeah. Am I reading that right? Like, man, we are just all over the place right now. And yeah. thank God because I like working. I love being on stage. I love performing yeah. for the fans. Um, it's like getting on a roller coaster, man, you know, for that, you know, whatever, 20, 30 minute set that we do. Um, yeah. but, uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun and you get to see places, you know, you've never been and it's great. So yeah. you get to experience it all. Do you, I mean, this might be a, just a silly question, but do you still get nervous after all this time? Like, is there still like that? What if like, oh my God, like I'm about to go on stage in front of all these people or is it kind oh, of yeah. like, uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was where, wondering, that, that's where the. That's where the uh, the uh, the roller coaster ride begins. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. It's just a rush, man. And then yeah, the best thing about it is is that you know you just the people they just love it. You know they love the songs. You mm -hmm. can tell that it takes them back to another time and place, and they're singing and everyone just seems to be happy when those songs play, man. So it's good. It takes people back to a better place. I think, dude. I'm telling you, nostalgic. Like I'm not a a drug guy. Yeah, I, mean, I know it may yeah. be hard to tell, but uh, uh <laughs> but like nostalgia is the greatest drug on the planet. Yeah. Like yes. man, like that is like I I'm not a big fan of new music. Like just not. I'm nothing against people making music. Everybody should make music right. if that's what you want right. to do. I just can't help it. I like older music. And like, I there's like too, that man. nostalgia to it where I'm just like, and I'm, I'm nostalgic for stuff that I wasn't even alive for. Like, right. Like, right. I, you know, that's right. So like color me bad, for example, like, you know, not to put like a weird timeline on things, but I was born in 93. So, uh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so album, so debut album comes out and then I come out about four months later. So, <laughs> but like, I feel like a weird nostalgia listening to, you know, music That's that I cool, don't man. remember is right. weird as that sounds. It's cool, man. No, there's nothing weird about it, man. It's just good music. It was music, you know, uh, from the soul, from the spirit, you know, and people can feel that. That's why people like that. I love listening to Earth, Wind and Fire from R&B, old school, uh, Cool in the Gang, um, Man, I just love Casey I love and Steely the Sunshine Dan. Band. Oh, Steely Casey, Dan. Uh, I love Steely, Steely Dan's Dan, amazing. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You there's know, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, yeah. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Like I'm a I'm a huge um like Parliament, like George Clinton oh, yeah. fan. So oh, like yeah. that and like Sly Stone. So like I kind of navigate into like, that Sly, lane. Man. Like there's just like I don't necessarily have a genre of music that I hate. Country music would be probably the yeah up there. But I still yeah. don't really hate it because there's people like Waylon Jennings and Johnny Cash oh, that I like. You like the old school. I love the old school yeah. country, man, too, man. But That's I like some thing. of the new school. But um, yeah. I do like the old school. Like if you say, all right, Mark, play me a country song. You know, I'm going to play something from old Willie Nelson or, yeah. you know, yeah. Waylon Jennings, you know, something like that. Dude, same. Like my family, you know, I'm from Texas. So like everybody here, yeah. you know, massive, like everybody in my family, massive, like old country fans. So like, that's why I kind of grew up listening to like all my tastes come from like what I grew up with, which I imagine sure. yours are the same. Like, did you grow up in a family that was, you know, not necessarily like a stereotypical way, but like the way of like just constantly having a record playing, like there's constantly music. Like, oh man, I, I had an older sister that played, um, she was a big Peter Frantum fan. Oh so man. She, okay. So I, I grew up listening to a lot of, uh, you know, Peter Phantom, uh, Peter Frantum comes alive. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. I must have heard that record, I don't know, a million times. <laughs> so did everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I can, I remember her, I remember her playing fog hat and, okay. you know, and then, and then, you know, we would travel, you know, I was, I was raised in Oklahoma city. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we would travel with my grandparents and, you know, they would play a lot of country music like uh, mm-hmm. Crystal Gale, Dolly Parton, <laughs> you know, oh man. Uh, Glenn you. Campbell. I'm I'm old school. You oh, know, Glenn Campbell. It. Glenn Campbell. Yeah, I mean, Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell. Yeah, 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 yeah. My dad's cousin used to be in a relationship with Glenn Campbell, so we always get to hear interesting Glenn oh, Campbell yeah. stories. I yeah, bet. she was she was like kind of around in like the country. I mean, she's actually like decently popular. Tanya Tucker. I don't know if you know that name, but uh, uh, yeah, Tanya, yeah, I know Tanya yeah. Tucker. <laughs> well, I mean, I assume. Well, I guess I shouldn't assume, yeah. but yeah, 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 yeah. That's like my dad's Heck cousin. Yeah. So like, legend, we, man kind of grew up you know like i mean i've like never that. met her or anything but right uh yeah yeah did you so because that's what i'm always kind of curious about is like people's influences i guess that's like my where my like love for like music comes from and like the history of it is taking a person i like this person well who did they listen to and then right branching off so right like growing up you know you obviously have you know your parents taste grandparents sister but like do you remember finding someone that was like yours and being yes. like, like who was the first person to you that was like, no, this is like, I found this on my own, man, I love this. Well, um, I don't know if I found it on my own. My dad kind of influenced me, but it was, it was the Beatles, man. Yeah. It was a, a, the song love me do. I went yeah. and I went to the record store and bought a, bought the 45 of love me do. And I, played the heck out of it, you know, yeah. just over and over again. I love the simplicity. I love the sound. I love mm-hmm. everything about it, man. And, um, you know, that's kind of where it really kind of started growing my music taste. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, my sister with with Peter Frantum and some of yeah. the R&B stuff that she would bring, like Rick James and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of that good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sugar Hill Gang she'd play. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, all that stuff was a big influence. And then, you know, and then freaking Michael Jackson comes along and just blows my <laughs> mind. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, See, man, I'm so jealous for that because, I mean, obviously they're amazingly talented people today and there always will be. Yes. But I yes. do wish like, man, I wish I could have seen those guys like come up or those girls like come up, like, you know, like to see Michael Jackson. Like I, I only have one type of memory of Michael Jackson and it's, you know, because through the media it's not a good one like i didn't okay. you know i didn't get to like see the thriller era like which i oh yeah yeah uh, like like yeah, i got to see like the end of michael jackson which you know right is an unfair I, way of looking at michael it, jackson it, to me. honestly it is a very unfair um i have to say it was an amazing time in the world you know yeah. when michael prince madonna it was the early 80s and you know these stars these entertainers i mean they were true stars man i mean i mean you couldn't touch them they were like are they real you know and yeah. then you know you would know 2 weeks ahead of time before they were going to do an appearance on on a live television yes. show yes yeah you know there was only 3 channels <laughs> you know right, or, right. you know there was only so many channels to watch but everyone knew when michael was going to appear or when his video was going to be, you know, aired for the first time. And then of yeah. course, Prince and, you know, and then, uh, I mean, music was great. I got to say the eighties were fabulous, you know, yeah. and so was, so was the seventies. So, yeah. but yeah, you know, but even I, going, that was my time. But like going into the night, because there's still a part of it is the mystique. There's like a mystique yes. to people like eighties, Michael Jackson, Prince, Prince kept the mystique his entire life. He might be like one yeah. of the few people that was like, I don't know if this is a real person or not. <laughs> like, like it, Prince could be a thousand people just pretending to be Prince and we would never sure have known. Like I, you know, is there part of you that is glad? Cause obviously like in the nineties, it's pretty similar too. Is there part of you that's glad that like color me bad just blew up in that time instead of like today? Yes. Oh man. I mean, yeah. we, uh, I'm glad we did what we did when we did it. Yeah. Uh, now today we would have got a ton more exposure because of right. social media, but you know our privacy would have not been you know held you know it would have just everything would have just been all out there and yeah. I don't know man I I kind of like the way how things happened yeah uh, the way they did you know yeah. um, 
the things that we did when we were young, man, I'm so glad we didn't have cameras and video. <laughs> we would have been in trouble. Dude, I've, been, dude. I've been locked up. <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine. Like, I can't imagine. Like, I mean, y'all are, you know, some, you know, four good looking fellas on top of the world. Like, it had to have been a, a wild it time. Fun. It was fun, yeah. man. It was just a good time. It was a good era of music. Uh, yeah. Life was easy. You know, the economy was doing well. Yeah. It was party time and yeah. the music was fun. So, yes. Yeah. You know. I mean, I am a fan of, you know, like some kind of sadder, like Cat Stevens type stuff. Like, yeah. But I also, I like listening to music and feeling happy about it. <laughs> like, I don't sure. need to just constantly hear like depressing music. I do like right. it, but man, there's right. something about putting on, whether it is like Color Me Bad or like, I mean, all kinds of music from the 80s, too, where you're just like, I feel great listening to this. Like, that's, yeah, that is amazing. Was there a moment where, like, whether it's, you know, as a kid or, like, early teens where you were like, okay, I have to be a performer? Like, were you kind of, like, born yeah. a performer, so to speak? Or did it kind of, you know, some kids are. They're just like, that never, like, starts yeah. or stops, but. My uh, my younger sister, who was closer to my age, uh, she was a big fan of that uh, group from Puerto Rico, Menudo. Ricky Martin. And yeah. Ricky Martin. Yes, yeah. he was a yeah, big yeah. fan of theirs. And uh, I remember uh, my dad, um, my sister wanted to go to their concert in Dallas, and my dad dragged me <laughs> to the concert. <laughs> and my sister was going bananas, I remember. Um, but I was like, wow, all these girls screaming at, me, screaming at these guys. Wow, this is pretty amazing here, man. Yeah. This, is, this yeah. might work out. You know, I might, I might could do something like this. But um, that was a moment. But um, it wasn't until I seen Michael Jackson live, you know, in Dallas okay. at, at Arlington Stadium uh, uh, with the, uh, the Jacksons, uh, was it um, the Victory Tour. Oh, okay. And that, that blew yeah. me away completely. Yeah. So. I was like, oh man, yeah, I want to do that. So, do you know what year that was? Like, do you remember offhand? Uh, I mean, it had to be okay. what eighty. I think it was eighty four. Four, yeah. Okay, okay, that's yeah, yeah that sounds yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I can't imagine. Like, was so man. was that the first like big show you remember seeing? Uh, no, it was probably my third. Okay. Uh, show. Yeah my my first show that I my first concert I ever went to was Kiss. And that really? was pretty cool. Yeah, oh, that's that was pretty a, cool. That is, yeah. boy. I mean, talk about like a first one. I mean, that is. Yeah. That's that setting the in, bar. <laughs> yeah, that was back in 79. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so right after like 79. Destroyer and yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it was. Um, in 78, it was think, the so. dynast, uh, the Dynasty Tour. Oh, wait, is it? Oh, the that. Wait. Uh, it? Yeah. Isn't that what it's called? Or Destruction? No oh boy, no. I can't. yeah, I think that's what it was. Dynasty. I think it was yeah. Dynasty. Yeah. Man. Okay. That, but but yeah. yeah, I went to see that. And then and then I think after that I saw uh Menudo. Okay. <laughs> and then and then um <laughs> that is such a <laughs> Hey, it was it was it was uh it was it was very different, but um Dude, they yeah. both had a different impact on me. Man. And then and then the Michael Jackson uh uh the victory tour, which yeah. was like to this day, there hasn't been a show like that. No, <laughs> of course no, not. No, Kiss, I mean, Kiss too. Like, yeah, I think the first, I mean, the first like decent sized concert I went to was, uh, I think like Smashing Pumpkins, which is very good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But then I took like the best concert I've ever seen. I saw, I took my mom to see the Rolling Stones a couple of years ago in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Great, I mean, go. amazing. Can't beat like, that one. There, there is something about it where you're just like, I can't imagine what it's like for them. Like when you're, you know, for me, like being the audience member, like looking onto the person on stage and be like, what is their world like right now? Like, I mean, is so for you. So like, like, what do you think is like probably like one of the biggest shows you've done? Uh, uh, we did a show in Philippines, uh, Cebu yeah. city, which was about 70,000 people yeah it was it was, <laughs> it was it was pretty big so, uh, we've, so done, we've done a few yeah so when you get off stage from that moment like what uh, is the you know as someone who i mean i've never performed for more than 
a couple hundred people. Like, what is the feeling getting off stage for 70,000 being like, like, is it just like a, like, how is that adrenaline? Like, how long does that last? Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing, man. Uh, you just get up there and you just see a sea full of people and you're like, okay, I'm just going to do my thing. And then you wonder, he's like, all these people are really out here to see us, you know, the group. Really? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, it's, it's definitely surreal. It's, it's a yeah. moment of, oh, let me pinch myself, make sure this is real. Yeah. So. How do you, I mean, I can't imagine like, how do you keep an, like your ego in check? Cause that's gotta be so hard to do. Like I can understand whenever I hear stories of people who are famous and yeah. they're, you know, an asshole in the story, which you could just be getting them on a bad day. I try to like ignore those kinds of stories because it's all, you know, who knows what happened. But like, you know, how do you keep yourself from like feeding into, you know, like, look at all these people love me. Like, you know, because I can kind of screw with your head a little bit, I imagine. It, 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 it has. It could. It can. Definitely. Because, you know, especially what we went through, you know, because there for two or three years, it was pretty crazy. But then. All of a sudden, man, when when you, when you put out that record and it doesn't hit the charts right, it's like okay, yeah. all of a sudden yeah. everything starts slowing down, you know. But yeah, uh, um, you just gotta, you know. I have to say, a lot of it is the way I was raised. You know, it's yeah. got to be the way you're raised, man, because you know you understand what's uh, in your faith. You know, understand what's mm. real. You know, and uh, yeah. I'm big on that. So yeah, yeah, I think. If if you have a good grounding, you can pretty much you can withstand quite a bit of shit. Like, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I try to, but boy, I, I mean, I can catch myself getting real angry at a at a restaurant sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I, can't, I, I can't be doing this. <laughs> yeah. Man. Man. So like the peak of so so how you're saying like go where things start to slow down is that what like now and forever or a little bit um, with that? It was like, kind of. Um, we made some bad choices on our second album. Um, on time and one thing, yes. Yeah. One thing you don't do is fight with the record label that's putting the money behind you. Yeah, you don't do that, and yeah. that's uh, we made a big mistake uh, because they wanted to release a certain. They wanted to release "Choose" as the first single. Oh. And we wanted we wanted to release "Time and Chance." Yeah. And we fought the label on that, and we released Time and Chance, and it didn't do what it wanted, it, what we wanted it to do. Right. And the record label was like, "See, you should have listened to us." And yeah. so, what happens is, is a business part then kicks in, and slowly you see them kind of holding back the money, <laughs> yeah. promotion, yeah. and all that. And you're right. like, "Hey, what happened to this? What happened to that?" You know, it's like record company just kind yeah. of. You know, they'll, they'll yeah. set you straight. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so much of it is based on momentum. Like if you can it's keep momentum. momentum going, you can, you can just. Now I on. will say this on behalf of the group at mm -hmm. that time, they took a long time to release time and chance. We did have a momentum and we wait, they waited, um, gosh, dog, they, they waited almost uh, three years before we put out time and chance, which yeah. we should have put out an album. Next, oh yeah you know right right away yeah but that was the record label that wasn't us because we were right. ready to go into the studio and get started and there was just this big long delay because of money and yeah. budgets and all that and they they held us back so what not so i mean were they just trying to like and also just trying to like milk the success from like the first album possibly man yeah. but you know um we had a lot of time to to get started on that second album and like again you know we kept asking hey when can we get in the studio when can we get in the studio and they were like oh they haven't given us the budget yet yeah and, yeah you know. that's i mean i'll say you know whether you know for what it's worth i mean y'all were definitely right about the single choice to me like time and chance oh, really? is actually probably like my i mean for i'm just you know one yeah guy, but sure. time and chance is like one of my favorite songs from y'all for sure so well, that's like, cool what one of the cool things about that particular song is uh prince had wrote uh written a telegram to us a letter 
to us talking. To, well, he sent it to the agency, but yeah, he talked about how he loved that song, Time and Chance. Really? So that was it for us, man. We oh, like, hey, dude, yeah. <laughs> we did our job, guys. <laughs> man. Oh. If Prince likes it. Hey, that's dude, it. <laughs> if I got a letter from Prince, I'd retire the next day. Like, well, <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, that's no. I that mean, I. Cool. Yeah, I like, is there, I mean, I don't know how you feel now, but was there ever a part of you that got kind of like jaded at the entire industry of like, man, these people, like these people don't know what they're doing or like, oh, it could have yeah. 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 I mean, you know what? Uh, you do that with everyone that doesn't, that you feel like they're not, you know, putting their best foot forward for the, for the group. The yeah. group was the, was the machine, you know, uh, also. So uh even with our management team uh, i don't i to this day I'll, i don't care what anybody says we had a we didn't have a good management team yeah you know uh to this day i'll say and i'll say it to anybody you know but th they they weren't when we were you know on our way you know with the hits and all that they really didn't know what to do with us and uh, mm -hmm. you know but it was the record thank god we had the hits that we did thank god but yeah uh, yeah um you know, things could have been better. Things we could have made better decisions, but uh, the, the the management team, I guess they did the best. But um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I've I mean, got different feelings on that. <laughs> I've got yeah, different feelings on that, man. I get that. Like it's it's one of those things where sometimes you're around people who are supposed to be the professionals, and you realize like you right. don't really have to be that good at something to get a job doing it. Like, right. And I'm not saying that's how right. it is with them, but boy, I've seen some, I've been around some people where I'm like, Oh, like you just kind of like, like worked your way into look, this. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're all, the group is, we're all 20 years old. We're from Oklahoma city. Yeah. Okay. You guys are the professionals. You guys are the ones that's supposed to be, you know, helping us with this. And yeah, again, thank God that we had the hits that we did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I guess that is maybe one of the good things about the music industry today is there is so much more of a, like an independence to it. It seems like you don't necessarily have to rely on, on that world of it as much. Like you can kind of do mm -hmm. like self promotion. Like you couldn't do self promotion back then. Like, I mean, not no. really. No, yeah. you couldn't. I mean, no, uh -uh. you really couldn't. You had yeah. to have the record label behind you. I, I have to say the two, two ways, two choices. I mean, Anybody mm -hmm. can get out and promote a song today, you know, yeah. on, online. But man, there was something about a record label, you know, controlling it and putting out the good stuff, you know, kind of developing the artist mm -hmm. uh, like they used to do. I like that way. That was good, man. That had more control yeah. of, of music. It was uh, uh, with radio, you know, what songs were being played and all that. Mm -hmm. And now it's just everything is just chat, 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 chat. Yes. You know, it's just. It's, you know, I mean, back in, man, you could call up the radio station and request songs. You yeah. can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Cause <laughs> everybody has their own radio in their pocket. Like Spotify, right. you can just, you be, you can request your own song and play it in three seconds. That's like, true. Which I, and I know a lot of people are pretty critical of the record industry as a whole and rightfully so in some ways. There's, you know, obviously some shady shit that's happened over the years, but I do think that it's better. It was better then than it is now. I do. I think so. Yeah. You know? I mean, I uh, think you can really like build a career so much better. And there are obviously still people right now who become to me more of like a flash in the pan success. Like, yeah, you know, like you'll never everything's see, just, yeah. Go ahead, you'll sorry. never see another Michael Jackson again. No, I think you'll, Taylor, you'll never Swift, see that. Taylor Swift's the closest that there is as far as like fame. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah, but she had a record label behind her. I mean, she wasn't like she had you a know, record label, and she yeah. came out what in two twenty. Uh, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Came yeah. out so, but yeah. now it's even no. different. Even even from then, it's like you know, it's like single city. You know, like right. You'll never see uh, you know some an artist come up and and get the proper backing yeah. behind them like they should. Um, yeah. So. Well, and people aren't as interested in the third album of a person now it seems like right. it's all about i would much rather find another person's first album than like build like a you know lifelong fandom of this group like like i mean you ask any like kiss for example 
I mean, you know, I don't know how many albums Kiss put out in between like 76 and like the, let's say, 90s. But I guarantee you, everybody who was a fan of them in the 70s listened to every single one of those albums. Oh, yeah. I could tell like, you. I could tell yeah, you all the songs. But that's not a thing now. Like, like people right. don't, like, they're, they would not be interested to hear what somebody who's coming out now is going to be doing in 30 years, which right. no. is, I mean, a shame because. Telling me bad, man. We're, we're so fortunate that we, I still get to go out and do the songs after 30 years. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing that we still get to do that and people show up. So yeah, what a blessing. Well, another thing about it too, that like, we're, I mean, not, I mean, obviously luck has a lot to do with, you know, success, but it isn't all luck. You got to be in the right spot at the right time, but you also have to like know what you're doing at that moment where you just waste the opportunity. But there's something about music videos in the nineties that mm -hmm. I'm, I think that's one of the things that like knocks music today down is there's like, dude, I was going back and watching like color me bad videos. I was like, yeah. these are so <laughs> so awesome like, <laughs> like there's nothing like this like, like music videos kind of suck now like yeah well yeah I, I mean i i honestly can't tell you when the last time i watched a music video <laughs> i i i just don't i don't know i mean yeah uh, you know i've i listened to some new music definitely because there's some yeah. stuff that, that that i can listen to but like a music, like there's no like I know that there's MTV and blah blah blah. Wow. But it's just not. It's sort of. You yeah. know the world changes, man. Just like anything else, it just uh, uh, different things happen, yeah. and different ways of you know to go about different things and. So. Yeah. No. So do you remember, like a specific? Because I mean, people tend to look at certain groups and be like, oh, this is, they were like an overnight success came out of nowhere overnight success, which I think is all complete BS. I don't think there has ever been an overnight success, but is there a moment where you're like, oh, things just changed real fast for us? Um, let's see here. We, um, well, I'll say one story that, uh, you know, and I've told this story a million times, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I will say, uh, we were in high school, and we were, uh, I think we were juniors in high school. And one of the guys was working at a movie theater, and he was doing the ticketing there. And um, Bon Jovi came into town on their Slippery When Wet tour. They were performing the next night in Oklahoma City. Well, they decided to go see a late night movie, and they came in. To the movie theater and uh, bought their tickets. Went inside. Um, one of the guys, one of the guys, one of the members of the group called mm -hmm. us. I, I, they all the guys just so happened to be over at my house. Yeah. And they called. They said, "Hey, y'all guys need to get down here. I think Bon Jovi just walked in with his <laughs> with his whole band." We we're like, "What? Are you kidding me?" So, um, you know, we get dressed and you know we, we wait patiently for them to walk out of the movie theater. And, so they finally walk out and we stop them and we say, Hey, you know, uh, Mr. Bon Jovi, <laughs> can, can we, can we, Mr. Oh, bon Jovi, can we sing you a song? And he was, he, I remember he had this beautiful blonde on his arm. He's like, man, guys, uh, I'd love yeah. to hear it, but man, we're tired. Man, y'all guys got a demo tape or something, you know, like, no, 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 man. We just, we just we need 30 seconds of your time, man. Just 30 seconds. All right, guys, let me hear what you guys got. So we just started singing our acapella harmonies. And uh, as we were singing, you know, you could look on his face that he's like, wow, kind of, these guys are good. You could tell he's kind of blown away a little bit. He wasn't expecting, yeah. you know, what he heard. And uh, when we finished our song, he, uh, he looked at us and he said, hey, guys, um, how would you guys like to open up tomorrow night, you know, when we, when we do our concert? Jeez. Open up a Bon Jovi? Are you kidding us? So yeah, we're like, all right, cool, man. You know, and um, uh, he wanted us to meet him at his hotel, and it was him and, and Richie Sambora who we met. Yeah. We went up to his hotel room the next day before the concert, and John was like, "All right, guys, I want to work with you guys. Um, uh, I'll, I'm thinking about putting you guys with Prince. You know, maybe Prince could write some songs for you guys and." You know, it was like nothing. Sure. Like, he was just talking. Yeah. It was like, yeah, I think Prince will be okay. Yeah, I think, you know. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. He's all right. Yeah. And um, uh, so 
we went and we we went to the concert and we got up on stage in front of like twenty thousand people and we we it was just us man on a microphone singing a cappella and the Jeez. crowd loved all the songs that we sang. We did like four songs. Yeah. And the time when I knew it was like, man, this might this might really work out for us guys, is after we had finished our last song, the lights on the stage came up. And then from the back, you see John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora coming out and giving us high fives and all that. Dude. And the crowd went bananas when they saw them, you know. Ah, yeah. Is, and then we're like, wow, man, this is we this is where we this is where we belong, guys. Yeah. So uh so I mean that, it hits you right. Yeah. So it hits it you hit right there. Like, like this is it. I like, could get used to this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd say so. Man, that's I mean, the amount of like what ifs for a story like that you know like what if he wasn't working that day like you know i yeah. mean there's just so many things which you're right you're just like Good man point. i mean that is yeah like there's so many things like what if he went to a different movie theater like what all yeah. these things like i mean i you know i would like to think y'all still would have had a massive career but who knows like you yeah know what i mean it's, it's hard who to knows say. man like it, what was the biggest yeah. like because y'all had started performing together quite a bit before then right i mean the, like, right i mean we were performing locally in high school around, right yeah we, yeah we were performing at talent shows and such things yeah. around the town so, yeah so like what would do you think was the biggest crowd before that crowd before the bon jovi crowd the biggest crowd's probably at at the uh uh, at the arts festival, <laughs> I don't know. That's I don't that's know. such a crazy <laughs> jump, you know, like to go from that to yeah, oh yeah, maybe, you know, there's just like know. twenty thousand. I mean, there's a small city's worth of people yeah. <laughs> in this building. Yeah, that wow. is. I, there must there was probably about 400, 300, 400 people at the arts festival that day. I mean, that's I mean, that's not a bad crowd. That's a pretty good turnout no, for an arts pretty, festival in Oklahoma. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. it was a talent. It was a talent show, so yeah, I ain't bad, dude. I'll say this like. I mean, I know y'all are all from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City might be the most like underrated city in the country. That place is so nice. Like, I, I mean, I, I have don't know. To the, say this, yeah, man. I have to say, I've lived everywhere. I've lived in Los Angeles. I lived in New York, Dallas, uh, Ohio. I've lived in. I mean, I lived all over the country, man. And I always find my place here in Oklahoma. This is home, man. I love it. I like getting in my car and not getting into traffic. You know, I like just <laughs> driving where I need to go. Yeah. Everywhere is 15 minutes, anywhere you want to go in town. So, dude, I, but it is growing. It is yeah. growing quite a bit. And uh, the food is good here. And um, the people are nice. And I, uh, this is my, this is my home. So. Yeah. Dude, I'm the same way. Like I grew up, you know, pretty small city, East Texas, like little, I'm probably about three hours from Oklahoma city. And okay. like, there's, you know, always the pull to like go to Austin, move to Austin, do, you could do more comedy in Austin. I hate Austin so much. <laughs> <laughs> like I, it is, it's everything I don't like. I don't like crowds. Mm -hmm. I don't like traffic. Like, and it's just getting so out of hand where I'm like, yeah. no, I get you a hundred percent. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like it's just better to just kind of have your home and relax. Like, and I mean, I like, the, I like, like how, peace. dude, it's, yeah it's the it's a it's a pretty underrated uh thing to have okay so speaking of so whenever like first album comes out first you know singles start blowing up yeah. obviously you start getting paid like decently well i would imagine was there ever a purchase you made that you were like boy i should not have bought that because i'm i am the type to like buy some super dumb stuff if i get my hands on some money uh i can't really say i was pretty good with my money i'd have to say yeah you know i never i yeah i didn't really go out and split um recklessly spend it yeah. you know i i just uh i was really cool with that you know um it was fun being able to it was fun to have money in your pocket and be able to go get a whopper you know when you wanted one <laughs> dude that feeling the feeling of just like not like having I can afford a whopper now <laughs> man i'm telling you the feeling of not having to like check your bank account before you buy like food is such a great feeling <laughs> but it's true it no it so is true. dude but i'm telling i mean as much as i i like to think i'm a good you know i like to think i'm a pretty responsible fella but man you give me some like some extra money i'm buying a full-size dinosaur skeleton 
Oh, there I, you go. I have nowhere okay. to put it. I will. I'm like, nowhere I'm buying random stuff, like full Nicolas Cage, like yeah. buying casts. I mean, yeah, I can, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I mean, the, the life, do you think about that time? Like, so 93, 94, it just think like that doesn't even seem like the same person. Cause like, I think of stuff from like five years ago and I'm like, Oh, that may as well have been a different person. Like, does that seem like a different life? Yes, it, it does, man. Um, I will be um, looking at old videos or old performances that we've done. And I was like, man, who is that guy? <laughs> you know, is that really me? Dude, the yeah, hair like, too, man. The hair was oh, something, man. Oh yeah. The hair. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, that was, that was a, that was a different time, man. It's like everything fell into place. Like it was supposed to. The yeah. weirdest thing, it was like, it was almost like, you know, we were, it was supposed to happen that way. Yeah. No, it, it for sure was. I mean, like we're, you know, just going over like the Bon Jovi story, like all right. those little things, if one of those things doesn't happen, you know, uh, none That's of it true, happens. Man. But yeah, like That's everything, true. everything's supposed to happen, how it happens. Yeah. Or else it I wouldn't have happened. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I guess yeah. that's where faith comes in and yeah. all that. So, yeah, that's man. Do you know? Okay, so I was curious. So I like, I don't know. I have a lot of time on my hands. So <laughs> I was wondering if you knew this. So I adore me more was number one, right? Number one single. Do you know what song replaced it? Uh, no, I don't. It was Good Vibrations by Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> Isn't okay. that, I was like, I was just looking because I was like, I wonder like what song. And then also, I Want to Sex You Up was not number one, which I was very surprised to find out. Uh, uh -huh. Four weeks at number two, do you know what song was number one? I do know that one. <laughs> what, what, what was it? Paul Abdul Rush. <laughs> I know that one. Oh, yeah. So, because I was kind of curious, like, how focused in were you? Like to things like that, like that side of like, oh, are we going to get to number one? Is this going to happen? Are we like, man? Um, yes, we were very, very aware, you know. Yeah. But one thing people don't talk about is that I know that it didn't go number one on pop on the pop charts, but mm -hmm. it did go number one on the R and B charts. Yes, yes, up. and. And everywhere else in the world, <laughs> it went yeah. number one. So <laughs> <laughs> that damn Paul Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! But then, but then we did a, a two year tour with Paul Abdul. And she, I have to say, man, she's absolutely great. She was, yeah, she was fabulous to work with. Yeah. Oh, I would. Okay. So, is there ever been anybody you met that so not like in any negative stuff? No, but like you met and you were like. Cause they say to never meet your heroes, blah, blah, blah. But was there anybody, anybody you met and you were like, man, this person was so damn cool. Like the positive version of that. Oh, oh man. I, you know, the majority of the people that we met were very nice people. Really? Everyone. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was just maybe one or two that I can recall. Yeah. But, but everyone else was great. Um, yeah. I love I love meeting my hero Magic Johnson. Oh, I love okay, him. that's how I was gonna great. I was gonna wonder like he who was, was like your hero and did you ever meet him? Magic, yeah, Magic Johnson, Johnson was, too. Yeah, he was my hero. Um, yeah. Uh, the the producers Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, David yeah. Foster. Um, who else was great? I mean, I, I I ran into Prince and Prince was cool with me. You know, I mean, um, uh, Janet Jackson was great. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people. Yeah. really great people. Well, man. it's just. Like I ask, because you know, so many people want to just bring up like how bad of an experience they've had with someone, I try to like ruin people's like reputation. So I just think it's kind of like a shitty thing to do. So like, I don't know. I was kind of curious if there was anybody that was like, no, this person was like super nice, like as no, they were cool oh, as they could know? be. Yeah, yeah. I I can't recall anybody that really was like, Ugh, you know. But yeah, everyone seemed to be really cool, man. Everybody, everybody Good. we met. Um, yeah. I one time I ran into I was I wasn't uh I went to the record plant uh in Los Angeles. We had a we had a studio session there uh with David Foster and uh I remember walking in there and I was a little late for the studio time. So when you walk in there, you know, there's a ton of studios and you don't know who's in who. So yeah. 
I remember uh, walking up to the front desk and there was this guy on the phone. You know, there was a guy on the phone and he kind of has his head down. And uh, I walk up to the front desk and I'm like, um, excuse me, uh, what room is Color Me Bad in? He looks up at me. It's freaking Mick Jagger. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, mate. I don't know, mate. Not sure which one, you know, blah, blah, blah. you know, and it's like, that's freaking Mick Jagger. Man. What in the hell is he doing yeah. at the information desk? He was God. there talking on the phone at the information desk. I was like, that's pro-. but you know, stuff like that would happen. Yeah. Um, but he was Mick Jagger was, you know, I mean, he was on the yeah. phone, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you just ran into people, really cool people that were very normal people. Um, yeah. You know, everyone was great, man. I can't yeah. really. You know. No, that's good. Was there anybody that ever came up to you that you were surprised to find out was a Color Me Bad fan? Or you're like, holy hell, like Rob Zombie or some shit like that. <laughs> uh, Billy Idol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Billy Idol. Billy that's, Idol. That's that's a great one. And, so what... and we were talking, and we were talking about him. Uh, Kiss, Gene Simmons. Really? Yeah. That actually. Yeah isn't as surprising as billy idol to me gene yeah, simmons is like yeah. just the t- seems like the type of dude just t- as long as metallica. you're talented really metallica. yeah yeah metallica. so what i mean they came up to you and were like no we were in the st- we were in the elevator with them they were talking about how much they loved our music so. <laughs> <laughs> god that has to be is there anybody that like people would be surprised to find out like do you have a guilty pleasure like band or music i mean i don't think anyone should have like a guilty pleasure you like who you like but is there anybody that you think people would be surprised that you listen to like for me it's abba massive abba fan oh gosh uh let's see um who do uh let's see here hold on i like abba too I, 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 i'll I listen to abba um amen let's see hold on let me think of something real um probably the country stuff you yeah. know like george yeah. Strait. You know, I love oh, George Strait. The man. Troubadour. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. George, George Strait's Strait. A good one. Um, geez, Pete, I love George Strait. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, let, let me think of just real quick. Give me a little bit more time. Okay. I'm gonna think of somebody really good. Uh, hmm. hmm. Come on, come on. I don't know. I can't think of. Him. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. No, it's it's actually kind of. A, I kind of put you on the spot on the, with that one. That's it's a hard it's... question to think. <laughs> yeah, that's still crazy. Uh, Britney Spears. I like Britney Spears. I like listening to Britney Spears. There you go. Dude, and Taylor I've, Swift. There you go. I am a I'm a huge Britney Spears fan. Like love Britney. Yeah, I mean, I grew love up like Britney. early two thousand, late nineties, early two thousands as like a little kid. Who, like I don't know anyone who wasn't like listening to Britney Spears, like mm-hmm. in sync, like all those guys, like. Yeah. So did you start noticing like the color me bad influence? Like speaking of NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, like did you start seeing people and you're like, huh, that's kind of like, like not ripping you off. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but like, th- like, did you notice like after you guys came out and started blowing up? Like sort I remember, of that influence building? You know, it, I, don't, um, I mean, I could see a little bit, you know, but I, I tell you, it was, it was, it was funny because I remember when NSYNC and uh, uh, Destiny's Child used to open up for us really? uh, back in the day. Oh, yeah. 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 They, they would open up for our shows, you know. And um, but that was the time when things were changing with us, because when we would do another show with those guys, um, I remember we ended up opening up for them. They were kind mm-hmm. of. We were kind of like going, it was like, you know, we were, we were up here, they were there, but we were kind of, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they were kind of getting bigger, you know, they're, they're more, more important than us. Yeah. Like that's, that's the record label. Like, hey, I mean, I remember doing a show with Destiny's Child and like, all right, you guys are going to uh, uh, go on and then Destiny's Child's going to go on. Uh, they're going to be like the headline. And we're like, wait a minute, time out. De- wait, wait, how, that's not right. But you could kind of see the change going on there. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, same thing with NSYNC, man. I mean, NSYNC really, it was an eye opener when when that switch happened because uh, you could just see their popularity just growing right before your own eyes. I mean, uh, you know, we got on stage and the crowd loved us, but when they got on stage, it was like death and okay, they are the headliner now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that I mean, I can, 
yeah. I mean, in sync is under in sync Backstreet like Backstreet Boys. That combo what was it like all Orlando, like coming from like Orlando. I think all yeah. of those uh, groups uh, were. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Wright, uh, Johnny Wright, man. Yeah. yeah. Or Lou what was the guy's name Lou Pearlman. I think Lou was... Pearlman and Johnny Wright. Yeah. yeah. Lou Pearlman and Johnny Wright. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, I, I don't. I've never met Lou Pearlman. I only knew Johnny. You know. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've never really heard a lot of good stuff about Lou, Lou Perlman. <laughs> I never met the but, guy. Yeah, I no, no. Yeah, I mean, he is, you know, he is Art Garfunkel's cousin. Isn't that weird? Like, what a weird connection. Wow, that is weird. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I tend to just find a bunch of random shit, and that was one of them I found. <laughs> where I was like, ah, oh, that's odd. <laughs> so before yeah, you go, because I don't want to, like, you know, take yeah. up too much time, got just a couple of random questions. Always end episode asking just random questions so yeah did you have like a childhood celebrity crush as a kid oh heck yeah i did um i love linda rodstand dude yeah, yeah. bear Fawcett. but my favorite yeah. one was jacqueline smith I love jacqueline. oh so i actually had jacqueline smith on uh, a podcast i used to do uh super really? nice yeah jacqueline smith is like one of the nicest people i've ever talked to wow, she was yeah amazing. oh man so pretty still is jacqueline smith yeah, i don't know how old jacqueline smith is i'm gonna guess now nah, i'm not gonna guess but but jacqueline okay. smith is like looks so good and you're like man like she's so pretty yeah yeah that's that's a really good one yeah i'd yeah all right do you sleep with the tv on or off oh oh that's I can't. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, mean, I got a full sound line. You got to have fun. I mean, yeah. I, now I will say this: I have gotten good sleep with the TV on before, but the, I mean, you know, nine ninety eight percent of the time it's off. All right, Desert Island albums. You strand on Desert Island. Somehow you still have a working uh, record player. Three albums that you could take with you. What do you pick? Yeah uh bg's uh saturday night fever i love that love that <laughs> that's, that's a good one. um gosh i'm gonna have to say the best of steely dan because i love steely dan <laughs> i'm gonna say uh earth wind and fire and yeah. marvin gay you know which just, marvin gay let's uh, uh let's get what's going uh, on uh, uh, what's going on yeah, yeah what's going yeah, on yeah that's probably did i say michael i, I you gotta throw thriller in there know. man so, you know you gotta throw yeah. thriller and then um uh uh prince a uh, sign of the time album. is that your favorite prince album it's that's mine that's why i was wondering uh it's pro it's really close with purple rain but yeah um uh, probably so yeah yeah sign of the time i think that album is incredible like mm-hmm. i mean obviously purple rain is massive but so it yeah. kind of like overshadows sign of mm-hmm. the times but that album is so good yeah yeah yeah, that's the that's a good one. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. I think I had. Okay, so you're doing because you're doing the I Love the '90s tour. Is that is you're yeah. still? I mean, you still have upcoming shows for the I Love the '90s tour, right? I think yes. I looked, there was a few coming up. Um, yes. If yes, you could do a tour with any two, so say it's a three header, so any two artists in their prime, who do you think would be like the ultimate Color Me Bad tour? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I'd love to do shows. I love, I'm a big Bruno Mars fan. So okay. I love Bruno Mars, you know, yeah, um, that's a good, that's a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bruno Mars is great. Um, who else would be good to tour with? Um, you know, yeah. um, geez, I mean, I could say a lot of old school groups that I love. Cause I would just probably yeah. be out there just <laughs> after we get off stage, I just go watch them, you know, but, um, uh, and yeah. that's what I, that's what I did when, when, when we, we did the show with um, Earth, Wind, and Fire one time. It was actually a, a Justin Timberlake um, foundation show, or uh, mm-hmm. it was the uh, charity event. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they had us on. He had us on there, and he had Earth, Wind, and Fire, and and I just I love watching Earth, Wind, and Fire. But a color me bad sort of thing that would really work out. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bruno Mars know, is Bruno Mars is such. I a love good Bruno choice. Mars, man. Yeah, I love he's Bruno Mars. he is incredible. Yeah. Like I was saying, I mean, I don't. Yeah. listen to a ton of like newer music but boy, i will definitely find myself just like going yeah. on youtube and just going down a rabbit hole like one of the greatest performers fun. on the planet fun fun fun, fun to watch fun to, and, he, and i've seen his show and i really enjoyed it you know 
and yeah. and I want to I want to show uh, a little love to uh, Beyonce with that album. Um, you know, yeah. I, I listened to it, and there's a there's a few several good tracks on there that I yeah. really really enjoy. You know, yeah. I really like the one with uh, Miley Cyrus. You know, I really okay. like that one. So did yeah. I, so I I listened to it because everybody was just like saying like you just hating on it and saying like horrible stuff. And really, I, was like, I mean, I, my circle is probably uh not the biggest like beyonce fans for whatever reason i mean okay. which i don't like like or dislike i i usually just don't have any like any feeling towards like beyonce i love destiny's child for sure i mean like so yeah love beyonce. Yeah. Um, yeah so i was like no nah, i'm gonna listen to this and just see see what it is and yeah i liked it like i was like nah you know but- what there's a couple of songs that has uh, also, you uh, about Stranded Island and music. You yeah. gotta, you gotta uh, put rumors Fleetwood Mac in there. Oh, you gotta put, you that's... gotta put rumors in there. <laughs> but, but speaking of that, um, um, it has a little bit of Fleetwood Mac feel. Yeah, in a couple of the songs, that... wow. and that was yeah. smart of her. That was, yeah, that was smart. You know, oh, Best of Eagles too. I can't forget that one. Really? I gotta put oh, that one on man. there. I, I'm a big I, Eagles fan. I can't stand the Eagles. <laughs> I don't know. I, do, I don't. It's always like just. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I have no actual Love the reason. Eagles. It's just Love I. The Eagles. Yeah, like them and Aerosmith. I've just never been a fan of, and I don't know why. Aerosmith's it is. cool. Uh, you yeah. know what? I like Aerosmith's music a lot. I went to see them in concert, and it didn't hit me like I thought it would. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But but they sounded great, but it was you know what it was is they started playing a whole bunch of new songs that weren't released and I was like, "Why are they doing this?" Yeah. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear the hits, man. Yeah. I'm a yeah, I'm a big uh let's play the hits. Like Rolling Stones did it perfect, which oh, I mean, did they? And they yeah, and they release music all the time. Like did, I think did, they uh, just actually released an album. Did they do uh go into the go go Everybody go no. to the goat. They didn't do that one. Uh, no, they did. The w- one of the songs that I was like kind of bummed they didn't do was Wild Horses. I'm a huge fan of that song. And okay. they did like a weird, which I don't I don't know if this is like a thing that people do, but uh they did it where they had everybody like get on their phones and like vote for one of the songs that they would play. Oh wow. And That's so cool. like they yeah. showed it on the screen like three songs and then put yeah. in everyone's votes and for some reason wild horses was not picked i was like this well, they had, had this they had it rigged. already this had it already yeah. <laughs> i was like a hundred percent sure like i was about to you know start storming the cotton bowl i was like they, they, <laughs> it's like dude they just like rigged this election man like yes, they did. these yes, dude they did. like wild horse how how are you not picking wild horses that song is amazing no, but yeah. i mean yeah i went no. and seen a uh, paul mccartney recently Oh, and man. yeah, I was really, I, you know, there was a few songs that he didn't sing um, that I was really, I, I, I was, man, I was like, dog, man. But uh, he was great. And he, he sang about like five new songs. And I was like, and he knew it too. He's like, all right, I know the songs that you guys want to hear, you know, because whenever <laughs> I start singing these new songs, I can hear crickets, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but he, he knew it. But we're gonna play these two songs anyway for you. Look, like, yeah, Yo, Paul, just play the hits, baby. Just play the hits. You <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, it's not like he's running out of them. I mean, <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's like it's, you know, yeah. like like he didn't play um uh, uh he didn't play Blackbird, and I was like, oh man, he didn't play Blackbird. Uh, come on, come I on, wonder. Paul. I wonder if that's the song he like normally plays. It doesn't seem like a song that he would normally he played, be on the set list. He played yesterday. He played okay. yesterday, wow. but he didn't do Blackbird. And I was like, oh man. I love that song. The Beyonce but he played a lot of the one the Beyonce one was good. I like did yeah. you like that? Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. You know, I thought it was pretty good. Of course, you know, I prefer, you know, Paul's version, yeah. of course. You know, but yeah. uh, you know, she did a great job. You know, she she tried it and she did it good. Now I would have liked for her to have I would have liked for her to have covered another other different songs but yeah 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 she did it for a reason you know and right, that was a right. good good reason why she did it i'm know? i'm with you a hundred percent yeah what do you think is the best cover song like are there any cover songs you think are better than the originals like where oh, both sure versions are very so. successful like live and let um, die is what i was thinking in my head because of like paul mccartney and then you know guns and yeah. roses but 
You know, um, I have to say, um, what? Oh, there's some, there's some good ones. Uh, like well, along. Whitney Houston. <laughs> I would oh, love yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would love yeah. You. That's a you know? that's a great choice because the Dolly one. Yeah. Like I'm, I mean, I like obviously. Who everyone loves Dolly Parton, but yeah, sure. Whitney Houston, my God, yeah, she just, like that's, she just, she yeah, like, yeah. Because I think it, uh, yeah. like all along the Watchtower is always a good one. Hendrix, oh, Bob yes, Dylan. Hendrix, Hendrix, yeah, absolutely. I yeah. love Hendrix, dude. Yeah, he'd be like top for me of like go yeah. back in time in their prime. Like, well, I mean, Bob Dylan said it himself. He says whenever he plays that, it's like I. I rather listen to his version yeah. than, than, than my version. Yeah, but, you know, well, it's the so. same thing, Dylan. like with the uh, Trent Reznor and uh, Hurt, you know, Nine Inch Nails, like the Johnny Cash uh-huh. version. Like Trent Reznor said that, like that's not my song anymore. That's Johnny Cash's song. It's oh, very yeah. interesting because it's such a personal song for yeah. Trent Reznor too. So to be like, nah, I'm, that ain't mine anymore. Dude, I'll tell you, uh, there's a little maybe a little oversharing. There are times where I'll be feeling a little emotional, and I will put on that Johnny Cash video of him singing hurt and man, it'll, it'll, it'll get the tears flowing. <laughs> Dude, that is. Yeah, I mean, man. That's there's music. a, yeah. yeah, that's music for you, man. There's a, there's a Christian song um, that does that for me every time I hear it and I can't listen to it, man. Um, yeah. What's that song called? Um, it's a, it's a father daughter song. Oh yeah, and it's a That's, Christian yeah, song. And uh, you know which one I'm talking about? Uh, I don't. I don't. Oh, butterfly uh, kisses. Butterfly. Kisses, no, I'm just man. writing it down so I can listen uh, to man. it. man, you don't. You don't. Oh uh, man, you start. Kiss, you have a daughter. You got a no, daughter? No, not that I know of. No, not that you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that right yeah. there song will get to me every time, man. I'll like, have to, oh my god, butterfly. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it. After butterfly going kisses. Through. Yeah, there's. Yeah, it's uh, Johnny Cash hurt, and then Patty Labelle's performance at Live Aid. But a real random one, but if you ever get a chance, I don't know if you watched Live Aid when it was going on, but uh, I watched every minute of it. Do you remember Patty LaBelle? She did, uh, I she closed, uh, she closed the Philadelphia one with um, uh, oh, Forever Young with Bob Dylan and Imagine from John Lennon. I don't recall watching that. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I watched it, but I don't remember that. Ooh. Dude, um, go watch. I have to check that. it back. Oh it out. Check it out. man, Patty Labelle to me—that's yeah. like, yeah, one of the greatest voices ever. Yeah, like, like I put her. Oh like, no doubt. Yeah, like even no doubt, maybe man. even above like Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, like Patty Labelle's up. Oh, yeah, she's man. she's uh, she's up there most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, man, love Patty. Yeah, dude, this has been a blast. I, I mean, I we're right at the uh, hour mark. I have, I have had a great time talking with you, man. This has been a blast. Likewise, man. Dude. Likewise. So again, before we go, plug, promote, where can people find you? All that good stuff. And we- yeah, man. Colormebad.com. You know, that that shows where all of our shows are. Uh, you know, uh, we're on Twitter. Uh are we on oh, there's no more Twitter, is there? Is it not? Nah. X. It's X, X now. It is, it's, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can we're well, I'll be honest with you. I'm not on there a lot. <laughs> Same. But yeah. you know, Instagram, we always check our Instagram, color me bad music uh my twitter uh the mark calderon uh facebook color me bad uh we're all over there so man just hit us up you know let us know you know yeah. you know what's up so uh come on out to the shows um we love seeing you we'd love to meet you you know 